Hi everyone, Stacy here with Holy Spirit Soapbox. I'm so glad you could join me on this episode. As I mentioned in our last episode, this episode is part two of two. So if you haven't heard the first part of the sermon titled Love Fueled Relationships, I highly suggest you go back to episode 136 to hear part one of this sermon before proceeding to this part two. Once again, this is Dan preaching at the wonderful Greenhouse Community Church in Utah. And I'm just going to say it again. It's so good. If you heard the first part, you know what I'm talking about. Remember, if you'd rather watch the video of this sermon, we've added the YouTube link to the description box below, so you always have that option too. If you want to go further into the First John study with Greenhouse Community Church, you can find the links to their podcast and their YouTube channel below as well. As always, reach out with any questions, comments, or just to say hi to us because we love hearing from you and being in community with you. Here we go, part two. Our roles are improved when we place our identity in Christ. If you put your identity in Christ, now I want you to also write this out if you get anything from this entire sermon. Identity is in Christ. If you're Christian, identity is in Christ doesn't change. Roles change. Roles come, they go, they disappear, whatever. They should never be. Your roles of being a husband, a father, a wife, a grandfather, a whatever your job is, should not be your identity. Don't, don't. You will run into so many things because when you lose that job, when you lose that husband, or when you lose whatever you do, your identity is gone. When you put your identity in Christ, who is a servant of people, who loves God and loves others, all those roles are emphasized and they are improved in and outside the house. Amen? When, when Jesus said in Matthew 20, 16, so the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. He's saying that those who esteem others higher than themselves daily will yield good fruit because they abide in Christ and Christ in them. Then he says in Luke 9, 23, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny yourself means to decrease yourself. Get rid of your will be done and increase in God's will be done. In Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 3 to 7, Paul says this, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, wink, wink, Jesus is God, checkmate atheist, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Paul says Jesus emptied himself. Paul says Jesus is God. Jesus is God, always has been, always will be. He's the Alpha, the Omega, and he emptied himself. But we can't? Wow, gives you something there, doesn't it? Makes you think. We need to be empty so the Spirit can move in us and through us. Look, check out what our boy John says here. St. John says in, this, in his gospel in John 3.30. Okay, he's, ta- he's actually quoting John the Baptist here. John the Baptist, ugh, this line, Drew and I talked about this line, and we're like, oh, the impact. He must increase, Jesus But I must decrease. So when John says, love and not, uh, sorry, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth, this is not just empty love by words. It's a self sacrificial love of eliminating that psychological want and that self preservation and looking out for others first. Like, 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 just imagine, like, I have a child, right? And he's hurt, and he's crying, he's weeping, he's crying. And then I'm just like, oh man, I know just what you need. I open the Bible, I'm like, all right, <clears throat> it says rejoice in the Lord always. I say, I say rejoice. Don't, don't cry. He's going to wipe every tear. I just throw Bible verses at him and just talk to him and just be like, no, humble myself and get down there and walk in empathy and compassion with him. That's what we're supposed to do. That's self-sacrificial. I can easily throw words at everybody today. But if my deeds don't show it, what's the point? Get down with somebody. 
Somebody's hurt, walk with them. Somebody's in sin, walk with them. Empathize, compassion. Get them out of it. Because why? That's what Jesus did. Jesus did that same thing. We let go and we let the Holy Spirit dwell in, in us and let him work. Okay? Like, there's so many people out there that don't know Jesus. They don't know the real Jesus. They don't know who he is. They never heard the gospel because people preached at them or they condemned them. But they didn't walk with them. They didn't love on them. They need that too. Just the same way we all need that. When we let him go and we let him work, the first fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5 is love. That's a fruit of the Spirit, not a fruit of man. Because love came way before man. And then the rest of those fruits of the Spirit will prove it's not what we do, but it's what the Spirit does in us when we let him work. All right, let's finish this up. 19 to 24. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our hearts, heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. All right. When we don't just talk the big talk and we actually walk the walk by decreasing, denying, and emptying ourselves, we know that the truth is in us. What is truth? Jesus. Jesus is truth. What does it say in John 14, 6? Jesus. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He covers all aspects of everyday life in that one statement by saying he is the way we have to live and the way to get to heaven. He is the truth we have to live by, and he is truth, and he is the eternal life that we're given because we believe he is who he says he is. But then what does it mean when our hearts condemn us in verse 21? That's interesting. Condemnation versus conviction. Condemnation is saying, I've sinned, I stink, I'm awful, I'm dirty, I'm wretched, and nobody can save me. Even if you're a Christ follower, right? And you say that, and I'm like, wow, I screwed up again, I messed up again, I sinned again. Now, I don't think I'm of the Spirit. I don't think God actually loves me. I don't think, I mean, he does love me, but I don't think I love God. That's condemning yourself. We do stumble and we sin, and we shouldn't deduct from that. Sin is awful. Don't do it. But when we can't put away something for good, we stumble, we slip up. The conviction that tells you that you sinned is a good thing, (laughs) okay? We can condemn ourselves all we want and say, well, man, I stink. I'm never making to heaven. Or we can heed the advice from the conviction and be like, wow, I did mess up there. Okay, I need to really decrease myself and deny myself of these things and increase God. Because you're not condemned, you are saved through Jesus Christ. It's not what you do that saves you, it's what Jesus did that saves you. But what about that sin that I know is bad and and I keep doing it? Like most people will say like these self-help books or whatever, they're like, do this or try this or practice this or change this or do these seven things to whatever, you know. And some of it may help, but those are not how you get saved from sin and those are not how you get eternal life. Look at verse 23 up here. John says there are basically two commandments in one. Believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. It doesn't say believe in him, you know, shut off your phone, get off social media, uh, you know, like, don't, like, it doesn't say that stuff. It doesn't say change your ways and try really hard. It says, believe in son, son Jesus Christ and love one another. What he's saying here is we need to decrease and deny ourselves. You want to know how to conquer a sin? Decrease and deny yourself. Do you want to feel, feel convicted or you feel convicted by God to change? Well, then decrease and deny yourself. 
You want to practice righteousness? Decrease and deny yourself and increase Jesus in your life. When you increase yourself, it's much easier to fall victim to the flesh. You may decide the, the fleshly want is something more important than God's instruction that's not good for you. But when you decrease yourself, the Holy Spirit can do his work in you because you get out of his way. It's like Holy Spirit's trying to come. Your heart's behind you, right? Heart's right behind you. And then Holy Spirit's coming. I'm coming to help love you and change you. And you're just like, like a free O-lineman. You know, like, no, no. And you're trying to guard him from your heart. No, get out of his way. Decrease yourself. Let him work. And then finally, a lot of people take this and many similar verses out of context, where it says, whatever we ask, we receive from him. This, is not, this does not mean whatever we ask, we receive, and if we don't receive it, our faith is awful, or that we're not trying hard enough. That is not what that means. And that doesn't mean that if you do get it, that your faith is great, and that all these things are great, and you're awesome. That's not what that means. Asking for something has to align with God's will, Okay? When you say, my will be done, God, I want a billion bucks, he's like, well, that doesn't align with my will, so you ain't going to get it. <laughs> it's not good for you. I'm not going to give you a billion dollars. I mean, I wish he would say it would be fine, but anyway, no. No, but seriously, like, we have to align with God's will. We have to make our will be God's will. Then you can say, my will be done, because it's God's will. It's the same will. So when you're praying, if you want to live a little uh, dangerously awesome powers, it's your will be done, not my will be done. Add that into your prayer. I dare you. I dare you to add that in your prayer. That is dangerous. Anyway, here's a big idea for today. Self-sacrifice or decreasing yourself leads to Jesus' love-fueled relationships. Decrease and deny yourselves. There's a plague that plagues the world right now. There's this what about me or me first or look at me type of attitude. We want likes on Facebook and TikTok and all these whatever things are out there nowadays, right? We want those. We love that. Look at this. It even happens in the body of Christ's church, I've noticed. We have Christians or people who claim to be Christians that have this attitude, this attitude that only sprouts from a mindset that this is the only life we have to live. And as Christians, that's not true. As people, that's not true. This mentality leads to divided churches and people. I love what the author Bob Goff said in a tweet from a while back. Bob Goff says this, Our problem following Jesus is we're trying to be a better version of us rather than a more accurate reflection of him. When we say it's not me first and we esteem God higher than ourselves and we esteem other people higher than ourselves, the spirit will move in us and the good fruits will bear. All right. You knew I was going to have an illustration today, didn't you? I always do it. I actually didn't have this planned until like yesterday. So this is uh, God Speaks, you know? Hold on. Need this real quick. Mm. Okay. This cup is your heart. Remember like the old, this is your mind, this is your or brain, this is your brain on drugs. This is your heart <laughs> on rocks. No, this is your heart on selfishness. There's a bunch of dirty rocks in there. Each rock represents self, and you're adding self all the time. We're like, well, I deserve this. I should be praised. I need the glory and all these things. And then you're like, but I still go to church, right? Still go to church. Well, it's kind of filling in there. It looks kind of gross. And oh my gosh, that's a dirt. That's dirty. And then you're like, well, I'm still going to go to church and I read the Bible. Oh no, but I'm going to add more self. I'm going to keep putting myself into everything. It's what I want, not what God wants, right? And we keep doing this. Does this look nice? and clean and refreshing for people outside of the church? Church, No. And we can keep doing it and filling with Jesus and filling with... This is not refreshing. It's yucky. It's gross, right? Because our self is mixed in there with church and Jesus. What we need to do, and I don't even want to reach in here, is we have to literally start denying ourselves. All those selfish desires, the my wills be done, take it out and throw it away. And then we can fill ourselves more with Jesus, or Jesus will fill us more. Now, this does not mean that we have to be perfect. I am not saying you will get every one of these rocks out. You won't. Not in this life. I'm sorry. You're not. You're not perfect. You're not Jesus. I'm sorry. Right? In this lifetime, 
It'll stay like that. But it's the constant battle that we have. We need to deny ourselves. We have to get rid of self. We have to glorify God. And everything we do, whether in word or deed, should be for God. When Tessa said her heart wasn't right, uh, Rich told the story last week, right? She said, I'm sorry. I'm calling you. I'm sorry. Um, okay, when some person in the church said that their heart wasn't right, uh, this beginning part, no, so like, but she recognized that she was, she acknowledged that God was right. She acknowledged that God is just, and she decreased herself. She's like, maybe my heart's not ready, but you know what? I'm sure you're still decreasing yourself too and denying yourself, right? And she's letting Jesus' love fill her. She's letting God work on that rocky heart that she admitted to. That's confession, and that's conviction. She heeded the advice of the conviction. Take out the rocks, right? Take out self. And then it will overflow to others with what actually is pure and refreshing in the form of agape love in the fruits of the Spirit. So question for you. This is a fun one. I had to ask myself this like 50 times in like one day. When you do anything for another brother or Christ. Uh, or brother or sister in Christ or not in Christ, deep down, is it to glorify you or is it out of non-obligatory love? Jesus' love, agape love. Because I had to come to realize all this myself. It, it, it's really hard. I had, to, I had to recognize why God gave me two eyes and two ears and two hands and two feet. Because he wants me to see him more and see others better as he sees them. He wants me to hear him more and hear others and empathize with them. He wants me to serve him and serve others more. And he wants me to walk with him and walk with others more. But he only gave me one mind and one heart. And he only gave me one mouth. So that I can only keep the knowledge and wisdom of God up here. I can only be sealed by the Holy Spirit and filled with Jesus every single day of my life. And then I can only preach and talk about the glory of God. And not myself. Folks, the world needs more love-fueled relationships, more Jesus love-fueled relationships, more than ever right now. Have you seen out there, guys? If people don't know Jesus, we don't just preach at them. We don't just preach at them. We walk with them the same way that Jesus walked with us and came into our mess. Jesus could have sat on that throne the whole time. They're like, Oh, yep, just wait for them to get it. No, no, he came down into our gross mess, that dirty water, and he's like, you're muddying everything. Let me show you the way and the truth and the life, right? He came into our mess, so why can't we go into others' mess and help them and walk with them in love, in the truth that we have? I'm going to be bold right now. That's why I say to you, if you are unsure about your salvation, if you are unsure about who Jesus is, if you're unsure if you're loved by God, if you're unsure of what Christ, a Christ fallen community looks like, don't you dare walk out this door today. I'm not kidnapping you, but I'm just being honest. Like, don't walk out this door today still unsure about all of this. The hazard is way too great. It's too dangerous for you to walk out of here unsure about your salvation, unsure about who Jesus Christ is. Don't do it. Because I don't know if you're going to be walking to the time of your death today. That's the reality. That's a reality. And I can't let you go without knowing Christ. And I will stay until your questions are answered. And I know there are plenty of people, I see a bunch in here, that will do the same thing. They will stay here until you get it until you understand Christ just a little bit more at least and answer those questions of yours. And if you know Christ, whenever you wake up, just know that that breath that you took and all the breaths, your little breaths I hear right now that you're taking is for the glory of God. It was a gift from God. And it's not a gift for you to just be like, great, thanks God, I'm gonna go do drugs. Like that's not like, this is not, the breath that you have to, that you're taking now to glorify or increase yourself. You have to decrease yourself and glorify God and increase him. You're in God's world, not yours, not anybody else's. 
Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. It's complete. So we need, we need to strive to decrease and empty ourselves and live out exactly how Christ lived. Washing feet, being empathetic, being compassionate, and willing to do anything that, the God, that God the Father needs to be done in love, mercy, and grace. Let's pray this out. Lord, Father in heaven, thank you so much for these beautiful people in front of me today. Thank you for the breath I just took and all the breaths that we're taking right now. Father, thank you so much. We know we can't do anything without you. We wouldn't even be here without you. So we have to decrease ourselves. We have to deny ourselves, and we have to empty ourselves just like you did. You came in great humility. You didn't come as a dictator. You didn't come as an authoritarian politician or something. You came down here in full love. You didn't want us like this. You still don't want us like this. That's why you love us so much that you gave your only son to die in the way that he did and to be resurrected, to conquer the death that we all are heading towards. But you redeemed us because you're bigger than that. You know our hearts. You love us so much that you decreased yourself and emptied yourself so that you can be glorified. As odd as that sounds, we trust in you, we love you, and we just ask that your spirit works and dwells in us so that we can be emptied, so that you can be increased, and we can show the, the fruits of the spirit to everybody. Thank you so much for your son. Thank you so much for your love and your spirit. Thank you so much for the people around us, here and not here anymore. We ask that you continuously guide us with your spirit. In Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.